The College Football Experience Old Dominion Monarchs 2022 season preview episode on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is presented by WinBet. Bet fifty dollars at WinBet and get two hundred dollars in free bets. Bet big, win bigger with WinBet. Head over to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash WinBet. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash W Y N N B E T to claim your free bets today. We're also brought to you by IP Vanish. Yes, I mean IP Vanish is the official VPN of SGPN, and they're offering seventy percent off if you go to ipvanish.com slash SGP. That's ipvanish.com slash SGP. We're also brought to you by SGPN Discord. Yes, make sure to check out our new Discord server. It is the perfect place to interact and sweat out bets with the entire SGPN crew. Just go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Discord. Hey, this is Eric Metcalf. You're listening to SGPN. Let it ride. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome. Welcome to the college football experience. Old Dominion Monarchs 2022 season preview episode. My name is Colby Swinging Database Dan, aka Pick Don D. That's not a pick, this is a pick. When Dundee happened, he was a superstar. I smoke and I drink and. Um... I don't have stress and I'm healthy. <laughs> oh, Monarch football down there in Norfolk, Supreme. Virginia. You know, you got to love what's going on down there. Despite their national championship, 2020 season where they did not play Ricky Ronnie stayed the course. We're going to talk more about that. But first I am joined by my co-host former Former James Madison Duke defensive back, give it up for the burrito eating, sideline kiss stealing, oiling and dealing, Patty C in the place to be. Hi, yes, the old Dominion Monarchs are heading to the Sun Belt. It's very exciting. Yes, 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 yes. Uh. Man. It is exciting. I, I actually am really excited about the f- this new Sun Belt. Seven five seven football getting represented with their own team in college football in the Great Sun Belt Conference. Well, let's say they leave the CUSA for the Sun Belt, which I think the Sun Belt actually has a pulse on the average college football fan. Yeah, and I think it's going to work out for them. And the CUSA kind of does not, if you ask me. Now, if you look at Ricky Ronnie, his first year he came in there, they didn't play football. So he just said, okay, they paid me to come in here, sit on my ass. Hey, I'm in. Right? No, I'm sure he was upset about that. But yeah. um, last year, I maybe thought he was making moves behind the scenes, maybe. Because yeah. I, and, and I, this is one I was wrong on last year. I, I was like, I'm going to ride the under because they haven't played football in a year. Well, guess what? It started out rough. Halfway through the season, you were looking pretty good. Yeah, they were sitting there at one and six going into their bye week, and they rattled off five straight wins to get to a bowl game. But that's that's what I mean, Patty C. Is like you look at that and uh, uh, I think tide turning. I see as I remember, I was raised in the desert, but tides kind of turn. It's easy to see a tide turn. You start one and six. Did I say those words? <laughs> and then you go bowling. That tide has turned. Well, especially when it's your first year coaching, it's like they bought in, dude. You can yeah. see a clear buy in there, and that's that's pretty impressive. Good round, you're celebrating with your appetite. Bad round, you're losing. You're using your appetite to forget about the round. I'll tell you something about appetite. It's a real fucking great thing to have. When right. you're one in five, a lot of teams don't have an appetite. This team did, and they showed up for them. And and really, when you make it, they're six and seven, they lose the bowl game to Tulsa. But 
they had a one point loss to Buffalo, a seven point loss in the sun bowl against the miners of a long Utah. trip yeah. a overtime loss at Marshall. This team is better than their record. I'm going to go ahead overtime and say overtime loss on the second end of a back to back road at Marshall, not in a, as well. And that was just before I, obviously the Western Kentucky game was, uh, well, they, 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 they played for the, the CUSA championship. Yeah. So I would say overall, you know, they did get the win against Hampton, but they kind of improved each week. Uh, last season, you know, the big, big loss to wake to start it off a pretty big loss to Liberty. Um, and then Buffalo, they tighten it up and you're right. Like as the competition got better, they played close to those teams too, until eventually they broke through and got the wins and the buy-in was there. And I, I really think it's, it was a great first year, way better than what I uh, would have assumed. So shout out to Ricky Rowney. Uh, by the end of the regular season, they're winning games by 18, 23, 14 points. Yeah. You know, some big wins. What do you think of Ricky Ronnie? Think he's going to make it work down there? I think he's the right guy for the job. You know, I don't know what his ceiling is as a coach. Anytime you're a Penn state offensive coordinator, have some at least experience taking a program pretty close to the top, I would say, but that's a new thing they got. And there's a lot of things at uh, old dominion that aren't established. Like the infrastructure kind of isn't there yet for them. Well, I can tell you this. They came up to what the FBS in 2014 with Bobby Wilder. He had him uh, six and six in year one, 10 and three in year three. And, uh, and then last year was just their, their, they were six and seven, but they were six and six at the end of the regular season. So they've only had technically only one winning season, Uh, but they did have two 500 regular seasons as well. Um, and a win in Blacksburg, right? Or was that in? Uh, I think that Norfolk. was in Norfolk. I think it was. Uh, too, yeah. But I mean, I kind of. I mean, th- we know it's it's. If they could just put up a fence, I feel like Norfolk uh, that seven five seven area oh, yeah. could could be some players in the Sun Belt. A doubt. I mean, thirty minutes from Hampton, right across from um, Newport News, too. I mean, just stocked, absolutely stocked with talent. Put the fence up. I don't know that Old Dominion has the uh, academic, uh, I guess, blockades that would keep them from being able to get a lot of the players in seven five seven. So you know, hey, ha- let's get Percy Harvin through the door. Let's get Tyrod Taylor. Let's get Michael Vick. Let's get Marcus Bruce Vick. Smith. Yeah, a couple guys that you know just are you know in the neighborhood. Uh, well, Dave Potnade is the OC now. Did I pronounce that correctly? Pot- Potnade, Potnade. So I have no idea. Um, Your guess is as good as mine, but. He sucks. <laughs> he came from Georgia Tech. Their offense, I looked at their scoring offense the last three years 124, 96, and 94. So technically improving year to year, <laughs> but terrible every year at the same time. Uh, well, they're uh, taking over Monarch's offense, uh, 73rd in scoring offense, 72 in rush offense, 83rd in pass offense, 85th in total offense. Got to get the offense better, but guess what? You know what helps that? 10 starters back. Yes, 10. And they have depth at the quarterback position. Hayden Wolf, great name. Great oh name. shit! You send in the Wolf. Send in the Wolf, baby. Uh, he was only a freshman last year to get to a bowl game, and he and he didn't start the whole season. So Played. it's easy to see that tight turn. Yeah, that could have been a big part of it. Uh, but they also have Daryl Mack, aka DJ Mack from UCF. He's he's in that uh, that that quarterback room, and also they just added Brendan Clark from Notre Dame. Hello, That's three decent quarterbacks. I mean, that's, that's, that's solid. Better than I was like, they have three quarterbacks better than Spencer Petrus. Think about that. Yeah. Hilarious. Uh, yeah. Gabriel um, or Daryl Mack rather played decently at uh, UCF. Yeah. yeah. He had yeah. a couple, a little run there. Um, I will say that even though we love the triple option, it's probably not super easy to transition into as a offensive coordinator from another system. True. And Fair. so Patton uh, did have a bigger challenge and maybe this is a little easier of a transition for him. Fair. That's fair. Uh, running back Blake Watson is back. Um, Patty C. They have three, all three of their wideouts back. Ali Jennings, the third. Jordan Bly. Is there any relation to Dre Bly? Gotta be, right? Gotta be. How many Blys do you know? Uh, Aaron Moore. It, so their wideouts are good. They have one of the best tight ends in the Sun Belt, and he's coming back. Zach Kuntz. I feel like Dre Bly was from the seven five seven two. I think so too. Yeah, but Zach Kuntz is coming oh, in at tight yeah. end, and uh, no, he's one of the best in the Sun Belt. Their whole tight end room is is really good. Well, um, Kuntz definitely doesn't stink. We know that much. Yes, Kuntz is getting after it. Four of five back on the O line, led by Tyron Hunt. 
Patty C, this offense has to be better than 85th this year. When you return that much, yeah. it's impossible. Now, the only thing I'll say, I do think the Sun Belt is much, 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 much harder than the Conference USA. Sure. So, uh, defensive coordinator is Blake Seller. Last year, they were 77th in scoring defense, 35th against the rush, 101st against the pass, 69th overall. Patty C. Defense wasn't wasn't horrible. Yeah. Can it continue to grow? I think so. Although I think you're right, they'll be challenged in the uh, in the Sun Belt. Seven starters back on defense, three of four back on the D line, led by Alonzo Ford at the D tackle spot. Only got one linebacker back with Ryan Henry and three of five back in the secondary, led by Trey Hawkins the third. Uh, He's the third Trey, so there's like nine of him. I don't know what the hell I'm saying there. I got you. You know, you usually you only call yourself you. Trey if you're the third. So I feel like just putting the third at the end is redundant. Either way, we discussed Hawkins, great name for a defensive back. Shout out to Hershey Hawkins. There you go. Right. Swaggy Trey Hawkins the third. It's a great name. Let's uh, be honest. They're breaking in a new kicker, so that could be pivotal in, in some close games here, but their their punter is back. Patty C. I know we got to go to a break here in a second, but I want to get to this I like everything this team is doing. They're returning 17 starters. Uh 18 if you count the punter. It's a lot. Um I I really do like think they're going to be better, but the problem is is you're before when you're beating Charlotte and uh Hampton and uh some of these other CUSA teams, I think the Sun Belt's a lot harder and I also yeah. think they're harder from a physical point of view. Um, we're yeah. going to get into it though. We're going to talk transfer portal. We're going to talk uh, recruiting rankings with, with Ricky Ronnie. And then we're going to go game by game on the schedule. But we're also going to see what Las Vegas expects from the monarchs. Hopefully you're subscribed on, uh, on YouTube as well. Cause you folks got to realize you can watch this. Um, so subscribe to the college football experience on YouTube. And remember to subscribe to the college football experience. I'm mean, sorry, the college basketball experience as well. Cause Jeff Jones, you know, that name, former Wahoo coach doing a good job at ODU. So subscribe to the college basketball experience, subscribe to the college football experience. We got you covered here on the college experience feeds in general. How about that? Well, oh. all right, folks, I want to tell you that the college football experience, old dominion monarchs, 2022 season preview on the sports gambling podcast network is presented by win bet bet $50 at win bet and get $200 in free bets. Bet big win bigger with win bet head over to sports gambling podcast.com slash win bet that sports gambling podcast.com slash W Y N N B E T to claim your free bets today. We're also brought to you by IP Vanish. IP Vanish is the official VPN of SGPN. They're offering 70% off. If you go to IPVanish.com slash SGP, that's IPVanish.com slash SGP. We're also brought to you by SGPN Discord. Yes, check out our new Discord server. It's the perfect place to interact and sweat out bets with the entire SGPN crew. Just go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Discord. We're also brought to you by Dave. No, I'm not talking about Dave Butts, the legendary Washington Redskins defensive tackle in the eighties. <laughs> I'm talking about Dave, the banking app that can help you get up to $500 instantly with extra cash. That's more money to fill your tank, buy a wedding gift, catch up on bills. All right. I mean, we've all been in a situation where we needed some cash, right? I don't know. Maybe, uh, I don't know. Maybe you went to spring break spent too much money. Maybe right now I could use some cash and go to the bar and have some fun. Yeah. So if you're in a jam, you don't call your uncle or your cousin or your, you know, Hey mom, can you give me five? She's going to give you a lecture. She's going to call you in the next couple of days saying, where's my $500. All right. Unless you're unbelievably rich. And then she'll just say, here's $500 and, and have a nice life. Right. Um, no, here, there's five hundred dollars for today. I'll give you another five hundred yeah, tomorrow. There but are no. some kids out there like that. Honestly, call. Uh, but but why? It, that's all humiliating. Like, what kind of person are you? Really? Come on. Yeah. Go to Dave instead. Yeah. Use Dave because check us out. Dave. No one will know about that problem besides Dave, and he's his lips are sealed. All right. There's no interest. No credit check needed. Download the Dave app from the app store right now. That's D a V E sign up for an extra cash account and get up to $500 instantly for terms and conditions. Go to dave.com slash legal. 
Instant transfer fees apply. Banking provided by Evolve. Member of the FDIC. All right. We are back talking Monarch football. And I've been wanting to talk Monarch football for a while, Patty C. Uh, they don't really buy into the transfer portal. No. They brought in safety Sean Asbury, the second from Boston College with Jeff Halfley, who coaches a good defense. So I think that might be a nice get. They got wide receiver Marquez Bell from Cincinnati, and I know he had a, br- a big spring ball uh, or spring, you know, the spring game. Uh, they're excited about the Bell acquisition. I can tell you that because uh, I, I think he might end up starting. Nice. And quarterback Brendan Clark, who you know Notre Dame has had some pretty decent quarterback play of late. So the fact that he's been stashed on the bench isn't necessarily an indictment on his level of play. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, you look at that. How do you see you look at uh, what they, they got going now. I will say in what they did lose is offensive tackle, Garrick Vollmer. He's in the portal quarterback. Reese Poffenbarger is in the portal. Great name <laughs> wide receiver. Frederick Antoine is in the portal linebacker. Joshua Birdsaw is in the portal defensive lineman Sequoia McDuffie. He went from one national championship team to another. Cause he went to Yukon. <laughs> Both these teams That's shared right. for a national championship yeah. in 2020, according to the New York Times. Split national championship. Yeah, Cornell Hendrick, wide receiver, went to Elon, where the Phoenix are. Uh, wide receiver Raphael McCoy, portal. Athlete Tyreek McDaniel, portal. Uh, wide receiver Nigel Fitzgerald, UConn. <laughs> uh, and uh, then you have offensive tackle Daniel uh, uh, Adagumpe. Portal. So most of these guys didn't even land yet. UConn was coming after their their team a little bit. Wait, I think they won the portal. So a couple guys left from UConn to uh, no, 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 from ODU to oh, UConn. UConn. Oh, then and they didn't get anyone from uh, UConn. No. Oh man, they still won the portal though. I do feel like uh, but, what's his name is uh, getting. Uh, who's that at UConn? I'm drawing a blank on his name. Jim Mora Jr. Mora Jr. Yeah. is taken from everyone. So friend it, of the program. Uh, I think they won the portal, even though they only brought in three. I think they're all going to be difference makers. I think that is a get and a win for the Monarchs. Pat one, and C one sixty nine nationally, twelfth in the conference. Those aren't winning the portal kind of numbers, but it's strategic. You're right. You I know think all three will be players. They had done kind of decently in the portal prior to that in the previous years twenty eight thirty three seventy six, and then all the way down to one sixty nine this year. But quality, not quantity, is the name of the game. Uh, recruiting wise, last five cycles, 128, 106, 86, 104, 120. Um, within the conference, 12, 12, 12, six in the Sun Belt or in the Conference USA, eighth in the Sun Belt. They got an uphill battle, um, talent wise. I will say one of their top uh, re- uh, players was from, is from Chesapeake, Virginia, three star Lamarian James, one of the top 10 kick returning uh, averages in the nation. That's the swag you need. And Isaiah Pope, another one of the top 12 punt returning averages. So they got some special teams athletes, what you'd expect to have down in Hampton roads. Yes. And uh, let's get into it. If you're watching on YouTube, you'll see this great graphic here. Four and a half wins is what they're expecting in Las Vegas from the monarchs. The unders at minus 120. the overs at plus 100. Currently these are all subject to change, but Patty C Vegas is basically saying they're going to go four and eight. Hmm. Well, you're right, man. When you consider the level of play that they faced last year, Buffalo, UTEP, Marshall, the Western Kentucky, Louisiana tech, FIU, Florida, Atlantic, middle Tennessee, and Charlotte, right? Those are all kind of me. Who's the best team on that schedule within the conference that they played last year or overall, uh, let's start overall and then go best. Team. Certainly at wake was their toughest. Game. Okay. Wake Forest. What's the next one? Probably at Liberty. Well, they still have Liberty on the schedule. Okay. So, uh, obviously without, without Malik loss. Willis though, but, uh, that could be an interesting game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think this schedule is way harder personally. I mean, what, what, are the big what was games? their other at a, con- what was their at a conference last year? It was, uh, they had Hampton as well. So were they playing? I think wait, I mean, there's a fourth team there that you're missing. Oh, UTEP. No, wait, no. who is the conference? <laughs> conference USA confuses me. Um, I don't know. Oh, Buffalo. Cause they're mad. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, last year, what? Liberty, Buffalo, Hampton, and Wake, Wake Forest. This yeah. year, Virginia Tech at East Carolina at Virginia and and Liberty. 
way harder. Oh, and four probably way harder. Let, let's hop into it. Friday, September 2nd. This game is fantastic. Virginia tech travers travels to SB Ballard stadium, formerly Foreman field new, uh, but they, they upgraded, you know, they're bringing, they're building that infrastructure. This game's awesome. It is and the last time they played here. ODU one. Yeah. Brent pry pressure. No pressure, dude. No pressure yeah, in game seriously. one. Seriously. Who are you taking? Gotta go Hokies. Like even though they're 0 and one in Norfolk. <laughs> a Friday night or two, national nationally yeah. televised on ESPN. I'm you. going Virginia Tech too. You gotta go Hokies. Slippery game though. Yeah. Very slippery game. Week two, they head to Dowdy Ficklin Stadium in Greenville. Nobody, and I mean nobody goes into G Vegas and expects to get a win, Patty C. Because because when you're in East Carolina, you go for it every time. Or you don't coach at East Carolina, you don't come to East Carolina, you don't play at East Carolina with a weak heart. Write it. I tell you what, we're going to be watching lots of ODU football because they're playing a lot of teams we really That's love. That's true. <laughs> I got ECU winning that. We believe in the virus, in the spirit. Who got got? handed to ODU diving into the <laughs> regional true. rivalries. That is true. Uh, I got ECU on this. So you got them 0 and 2. Yeah. Back to back away. That's a game that's a little. I don't know. Who, who, who uh, hosting Virginia Tech or going to ECU? Which game do they have better odds in? I think they have better odds than the Virginia Tech. I think game. you might be right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, back to back away. They travel to Scott Stadium. Bring yeah. your tiki torches, you little <laughs> fucking nerds. Yeah. It's, a, right? it's a hornet's nest when they're taking down statues, but normally <laughs> Charlottesville is a pretty big snooze fest. So uh, I'm going to say that. Maybe they should go out and get Brandon Armstrong's the problem. He's not a statue quarterback. That's they got to right. go get a statue, get a statue quarterback. And tear yeah. Every day, every yeah. game before uh, UVA plays, they should just tear down like Robert e. Lee outside the stadium, and the, <laughs> the tiki torches will right. come out. They should use that as to pack the crowd because no. No one else shows up. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, get on like every uh, Saturday. We will take down a racist piece of shit <laughs> statue. All right. And they'll get super excited. Packed house in and it's inside a stadium, so some maniac won't be able to drive through the drive fucking a car thing. Through it. This is kind of effed up what we're saying here. No, it's, I mean, look, I like this idea. It's ridiculous. But yes. You can just create them. Just do like you could have one of Hitler and just be like, hey, <laughs> we're gonna tear this down. Right. And then people would show up. All right, week four. Uh, wait, do you have them beating Virginia? Uh, this is gonna be a tough game that Virginia needs to be careful. Obviously. I do think so. Uh, I gotta go Cavs though. I think so too. Zero and three, maybe one and two. You could talk me into. Yeah. And then the two win Arkansas State Red Wolves come to town, but watch out because this was the number one recruiting class in the Sun Belt last year with Butch Jones Yowzas. and James Blackman, the former Florida State quarterback, is the Red Wolves quarterback. Only lost to Tulsa by seven. Only lost to Memphis by five. Only lost to twelve and one Louisiana by one. This is an underrated team. Be careful. I'm I, taking ODU. I think getting them at home is huge. Yeah, it is gigantic. I am taking ODU as well. So one and three in September. Yeah. Can they find four <clears throat> more wins? They host the Liberty Flames and Hugh Strip Club Freeze. This is low key, maybe one of my favorite games of this weekend, at least. You know, interesting programs in Southern Virginia vying for. I just think Hugh Freeze X's and those ways will be ahead of them a little bit. But ironic, yeah. Wouldn't shock me if they won this. We read that they were supposedly trying to uh, mash uh, what Ronnie did last year with uh, what the uh, new OC was it Penanod? Pen 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 yeah, something like something that. like that. Yeah. They said going up to the line, lots of audibles on the line of scrimmage, 50-50 run pass. Um, who Pat, knows what that off Nod, Pat Nod, Nod, yeah. Pat Oswald. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's from Virginia. Something like Shout that. Out. He is. Shout, Shout out to out. Sterling, Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> Pat <Patton> Oswald. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, Patty C the schedule. What do you got him at? At that bye week when, when October 8th, comes. I got him one and four. I got him one and four too. They get up the, the, the bye week and then they are headed to the teal turf. Are we going to have the exact same season as last year? One and five no, to start. No, I don't think so. But then yeah, the second half the, schedule doesn't get easy. Headed to, to Brook stadium, take on big bird, Grayson McCall, McCall, 
McCall. Yeah. Big bear, Grayson McCall and his new NASCAR NIL deal. <laughs> They're going to run laps around him. Patty C. Hello. Give me the shot clears. Do you think the buy helps uh, Ricky Ronnie prepare for coastal Carolina's attack? Probably a little, but not enough. I'm taking coastal dude. Yeah. Uh, then they're home. They got homecoming at SB Ballard Stadium. Take it on the Georgia Southern Eagles. Guess what? That win. That's a win. Oh man! Give me win number two. Not a believer in old. Uh, who's the coach? Clay there? Helton. Clay Helton. Never. Never. I know you're not. Um, okay. Who so you taking. I'm taking. Uh, I'm taking ODU. I agree with you. So you got him two in what is it? Three, I believe. No, is that two? No, two, two and, and four, five, two and five, two and five. Yeah. Then they are at Center Park Stadium where Fred McGriff used to hit dingers. Uh, it's probably a loss. That's a loss, dude. Yeah. Three, two and six, and then they're home to the Marshall Thundering Herd. I'll say this: they pushed Marshall to overtime last year in Huntington. Hmm. Throw that in the 50 50 pile. I'm taking Marshall. I'm taking Marshall too, but two and seven. This is a big opportunity here. The James Madison Dukes. You can mm. see Patty C's hat on if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, they come to SB Ballard. This is a true 50 50 game. You know what? Give me ODU in an upset special. Well, I'll give them one of those two, and so I'll say they get Marshall because <laughs> they're not getting JMU, baby. So even though I do believe they have the all-time lead in this series, ooh. I hate to admit it. <laughs> hey guys, we're coming in though. We're taking over the state. I'm not just it's talking about tide at the group of five level. I'm talking about Virginia, Virginia Tech. You're all screwed. JMU's coming for that ass, and we're gonna we're gonna pound it. You know. Uh, I, I think I think uh, JMU loses in uh, Norfolk. You got them at three and seven to this point in the season. Three and seven. Then they head to Kid Brewer, the best one of the best stadiums in America. Take on App State. That's a loss. That is a loss. I got them at three and eight. And the back to back away, they go to Hancock Whitney Stadium in Mobile. And you know what, Patty C? Five and seven Jags last year. I think South Alabama is going to beat them. I think they're ahead of them right now. Probably. I think you should expect a little step back if you are uh, Old Dominion. Because what did they do? F uh, six and seven last year. So six and six regular season. But you're going to a much tougher conference. Three and nine is respectable. I, I can mean, see four and eight. Either way, we're I on think the they're under. only going to be favored in probably two games. That would be. I'm making the assumption. Arkansas State. I'm making the assumption that Arkansas State or JMU could be favored. I think they'll be favored in the Georgia Southern game for sure. So that's one. No, but I think one of the other two, like if James Madison, uh, yeah, uh, they could be favored yeah. in one of those two. So I'm going to say they'll be favored in two games this year. And they pull out a third win. Three. But I mean, watch them beat Virginia Tech week one. <laughs> they did it before. Shit. And they're I do think they're a better team this time than a couple of years ago. Well, there's one thing that kind of works in your favor is that Ronnie is showing some acumen on special teams. You know, and that is the difference maker that you've pointed out so many times. It is that it is the difference between wins and losses in close games. So is Ricky Ronnie that dude? We shall find we out. We shall find out, uh, folks. I'm on the under. Patty C's on the under. But man, I can't wait for Fun Belt Sun Belt action and the Monarchs taking on the Hokies. I cannot wait, folks. We have you covered. We handicap every single college football and college basketball game. We've been doing this shit for like five years. All right. Check us out. Subscribe to the college football experience, wherever you listen to podcasts or on YouTube, subscribe to the college basketball experience. Like I said, Jeff Jones, ODU, you keep a good program. I think this year they might be all right. Check us out. Um, also, if you're a VCU Rams fan, I mean, come on, or a Richmond spider fan, great, great win last year in the tournament, Jacob Gilliard, good point guard. We oh, got yeah. you covered. What, Hampton, whatever. I mean, we got Dude. you covered. So, I mean, that area of of the map is underrepresented represented in college, major college sports. Exactly. Subscribe to those feeds. Also, check out the uh, sports gambling podcast. We just had Pat McAfee on the show, Mike Leach on the show, uh, Phil Steele on the show, and and I mean, we're they're doing NFL team previews. All right, every single team, all 32 teams going through the win totals, what to expect, good uh, sneaky players on the roster that might help your fantasy team. Check it out. I'm sure they'll get to the Washington Redskins or the Carolina Panthers really soon. Uh, if they haven't already, I think they already did the Panthers. 
Um, so subscribe to the, to the sports gambling podcast. Also subscribe to the NBA gambling podcast, Terrell Furman, jr. Seven, five, seven. Yeah. I mean, that's him. That is, that's one of your own. There you go. Uh, you he, he hosts the that. NBA gambling podcast. He also hosts the WNBA gambling podcast. Great guy. Um, and uh, very, very knowledgeable. So listen to those podcasts. Also the MLB gambling podcast. Maybe you're a Washington nationals fan, a Baltimore Orioles fan. Also check out the college baseball experience with Noah Beanick. Uh What else? Patty C does the Virginia, Virginia uh, MMA gambling podcast. I think they could get in some MMA action. Oh yeah. There's yeah. Some Virginia S- beach guys down there. Soccer gambling podcast. Uh, obviously the world cup is uh, right around the corner. MLS gambling podcast. You know, if we, you're need a, uh, we need the Virginia squires as an expansion. What, 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 were they Richmond or were they uh seven, five, seven? I want to say they were seven, five, seven. I thought they were. Too. Yeah. Um, either way, check it out. USFL gambling podcast. Hopefully they'll get a team. Wouldn't it be great if they had a team down there? That would be sick. They should get that going. All right. Check out the USFL gambling podcast. What else? Formula one NASCAR. You go on and on and on. There's just get the SGPN app, hang out in the discord channel. Always a fun hang, whatever you're betting on, or even if you're not even betting, if you're just watching a sporting event and you're bored at home, I'm telling you, it's a lot of fun. Check you out know who that. they should get. Who's that? You know who they should have gotten instead of uh, the guy from Georgia tech. If he doesn't work out. Go get Ronald Curry. He's the uh, offensive coordinator for this, or I, I think he was the quarterbacks coach for they the Saints. Should get him. They should just bring him back. Bring to him the home. Bring seven. him home, Ronald. You know Curry. what he would do recruiting wise? That would be great in that area. Or Dre Bly. You know he's the secondaries coach for UNC. Bring him on as the DC. Oh, oh man, come on! There's Let's so much go. potential. Let's go. All right, folks. Uh, honestly, if you give us a five star review on uh, iTunes, we would certainly appreciate that. If you uh, say some nice things about us, if you do that, take a screenshot, find us on Twitter at the Col- or find me on Twitter at the Colby D or uh, the college football experience on Twitter at TCE on SGPN. Show us that screenshot. We'll send you a shirt. That'll look like that. That pennant right there. Boom. Patty C's on Twitter at Patty C831. NC Nick, our Sunbelt fun belt specialist is on, on Twitter at uh, NC underscore N I C K. We are the college football experience and the college basketball experience. Subscribe, tell a friend. All right, folks, I'm on the under. I'm sorry. Patty C's on the under, but this is the college football experience. ODU style. You better start thinking about yours. And we out of here.